Kate Blackwell ist die absolute Herrscherin des Diamantenimperiums Krüger Brent. Ihr Vater, James McGregor, hatte lange Jahre vor dem Ersten Weltkrieg zusammen mit seinem farbigen Freund Banda Diamanten in der Wüste Namib gefunden. Darunter auch einen großen Stein, der zwar wertlos war, aber zum Symbol des Aufstiegs der jungen Firma wurde. Ihren Vater hat Kate nicht mehr kennengelernt und auch ihre Mutter verlor sie früh. Mit 18 übernahm sie selbstbewusst die Leitung des Unternehmens und heiratete den Freund ihres Vaters, David Blackwell, den sie von Jugend auf liebte und der zum Vizepräsidenten des Unternehmens aufgestiegen war. Als Kate von Brad, ihrem Sekretär und Vertrauten, die Nachricht vom tödlichen Unfall ihres Mannes erhält, ist sie verzweifelt. Aber mit größter Intensität widmet sie sich dem inzwischen weltweiten Unternehmen und ganz besonders der Erziehung ihres einzigen Sohnes Tony, der einmal ihr Erbe antreten soll. Tony jedoch, der unter dem Einfluss seiner beherrschenden Mutter zu stottern beginnt, möchte Maler werden. Um sich dem Einfluss seiner Mutter zu entziehen, meldet er sich im Zweiten Weltkrieg freiwillig zur US-Luftwaffe und studiert nach Beendigung des Krieges in Paris Malerei. Tony verliebt sich in das Aktmodell Dominique, die auch bereitwillig zu ihm zieht. Sein Glück ist vollkommen, als ein Kunsthändler seine Bilder ausstellt und selbst der bekannte Kritiker Tessot zur Vernissage erscheint und sich wohlwollend äußert. Am nächsten Morgen liest Tony in der Zeitung eine vernichtende Kritik. Er ist völlig niedergeschlagen und beschließt, die Malerei aufzugeben und Paris zu verlassen. Durch eine unvorsichtige Äußerung Bretts wird Tony klar, dass Dominique von seiner Mutter bezahlt worden ist. Durch Zufall trifft Tony eines Tages Dominique wieder. Sie erklärt zwar, dass sie ihn geliebt hat, aber er beschimpft sie als Hure, die Geld von seiner Mutter angenommen hat. Wütend wirft er, wieder stotternd, seiner Mutter vor, dass sie ihn hinters Licht geführt hat, um ihn wieder an das Imperium Krüger Brent zu binden. Trotz seiner reservierten Haltung ihr gegenüber tritt er als Direktionsassistent der Firma bei. sorry to hear about that. I want the money for his family, put in trust, Brad. And will you arrange for more funds to be given to his friends? We have underground contacts that can handle that for us. But I do have something that might make you feel a little better. You told me to uh, keep Tony busy, and he came up with two possible acquisitions. Now, I don't know if we can get them or not, but if we could, it would be a good buy. Wyatt oil and two. Did Tony do a good job? Yes, he did. Good. This Wyatt is sitting on dozens of oil leases. It could be worth a fortune. And, uh, Charlie Wyatt owns the entire company and half of Texas as well. I wonder he's smiling. Hmm. Well, this Count Hoffman is a pretty bright fellow. He uh, started with a steel mill in Essen. Now he's got shipyards, a petrochemical plants, and an electronics company. Hmm. Did Tony have time to do a personal history? Hmm. Yeah. It seems they both drew the same cards when it comes to family. Both are widowers. Both have a daughter. Hmm. How old? Early 20s. Now, the Wyatt girl's been divorced, but uh, as you will see, she's quite a beauty. And the Hoffman girl is just about to get married. Now, I've had some contact with their managers on a few occasions, just social occasions, of course. And as far as I can tell, neither of them want to sell, and neither will. Well, we can cut that problem in half. We only need one of the companies. Well, they're both 18 carats. It's going to be pretty hard to decide. Maybe Tony can do that for us. Yeah, he's done well. He's done damn well. But you're not really going to leave a decision like this up to him. He needs more seasoning. He doesn't need more seasoning to decide which of two girls he likes best. Kate, you Brad, can't be history. serious. One empire marries another. What do you get? You get a dynasty. Listen, Kate, the boy is still bleeding from your little Paris arrangement. If he figures out what you're up to, you really could lose him. Brad, you know what I need from you? I need a complete biography on both these girls. Kate. Thank you, Brad. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I can't make it. I've got to go to Canada on Monday, and I've got a lot of work I have to clear up before I go. Oh, Tony, please. Tony, this is very important. Charlie Wyatt and Count Hoffman will be there, and they're very important. I know who they are. I worked on the report with Brad. I know you did, darling, and you did a wonderful job. 
It's this report that convinced me we need them. We haven't got a prayer of getting either one. Right, not unless you help us. I should think you'd want to be able to finish something you helped start. What's the catch? Tony, you are helping run this company. Now, I want to give you more responsibility, and I think you can help make the deal. Well, which one are you really after? Why, well, a violent tool. Tony, increase our profits as much as 15%, maybe more. When the Arab countries realize that they have the world by the throat, they're going to gather together and they're going to squeeze out every dollar they can. Oil's going to turn into liquid gold. What about international technology? It's good. It's a good company, but the plum is Wyatt. Oh, Tony, it's a perfect acquisition for us. Tony, I need you there. I do. Now, Canada can wait a few days. You can make this happen. You'll see. Blackwell, Lucy's been talking about nothing else but coming up here, especially about meeting you. Oh, I'm so glad you could come. Oh, well, I wouldn't have missed it for the world, Miss Blackwell. Mr. Wyatt, you didn't tell me you had such a beautiful daughter. Well, one look at Lucy tells it all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you must be ready for some refreshment. Yes, thank you. Your pilot showed us some of the island. You got yourself a small paradise up here. Oh, yes. I fell in love with it the first time I saw it. Oh, wait till you hear what I've got planned this weekend. We're going to have the most wonderful time. It's a Winslow Homer. It's one of my favorites. You know, it looks like it might have been painted up here. Actually, it was. The storms off the winter coast can be very frightening. Here is someone that I want you to meet. Tony, this is Lucy Wyatt. Hello. I uh, saw you looking out to sea before. You look like a Charlie, captain on the bridge of a ship. I want you to meet my son. This is Lucy's father, Charlie Wyatt. Good to meet you, Tony. How do you do, sir? Well, what a lovely home this is. Do you spend much time here? No. Well, did you grow up on the island? Well, partly. Oh, some of Tony's happiest memories are in this house. He's just so busy, he hardly has a chance to come back and enjoy it, do you, Tony? No, I don't. As a matter of fact, I'm supposed to be in Canada tomorrow. But he postponed the trip just so he could meet the Wyatts. Well, we're both very pleased about that. <laughs> now, you know, I've heard a lot about you, son. You, uh, you wouldn't want to come out to Texas and work for me, would you? Mm -hmm. Thank you. But I don't think that's quite what my mother had in mind. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> no, no, excuse I me, Mr. Blackwell, not. but this coal. Oh, thank you, Cynthia. Will you excuse me? I'm sure Tony will keep you entertained. Hello? Kate. Oh, Brad, you're doing a wonderful job. No, I'm, I'm afraid that I can't stall them much longer. Yes, I did. I did. I told them about the bad weather on route, but now the, the count is talking about canceling out. Wyatt girls had a very good head start. And Brad, she is a real beauty. Really, she's even better than her photograph. Well, then um, we'll be taking off in a few minutes. Um, I'll see you soon. May I present my daughter, Marianne? Oh, Marianne, I'm so pleased to meet you. And I'm so glad you could come and spend this weekend with us. Thank you. My apologies for being so late. The plane was delayed. Yes, I was told. I'm very sorry about that. Please come and meet my other guests, will you? Tony! This is Marianne Hoffman, this is Count Hoffman, my son, Tony, Lucy, Wyatt, Charlie Wyatt. Oh, you met at the Wyatt House, didn't you? Yes, I believe I remember. Yes, you did. You met at the Wyatt House. We met at the White House. You did. Yes, of course. And I think you did. We have a gin and tonic and a daiquiri. Yeah, put a little sprig of cactus in there for the young lady. Watch yourself in the clinches. Tony, hon, how would you like to show me around outside, hmm? Uh, it's getting kind of buggy out there. No, I, I really think you're better off in here. Would you excuse me? You got a little barbecue out there somewhere? <laughs> oh, it's very oh, 
move this around, isn't it? Because they're always interested in what's going on. Here you are. Good morning, Charlie. Good morning, morning Lucy. Oh, you look so pretty this morning. Oh, thank you. Mary Ann, I haven't seen your father yet this morning. Good morning. He's gone out to explore the island. Oh. He's an early riser. Now, you know, he mentioned to me that you like horses. We have a fine stable here. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Blackwell. But today's so lovely. I think I'll just wander around. Oh, all right. Oh, oh sorry. Did it spill? No, fine. Charlie Wyatt and I are going sailing. I think he'd like to know that his daughter was being entertained. How oh, about a dancing bear? I'm sure we could buy one. A dancing bear isn't going to set this deal. Out. Tony Blackwell, executive vice president of Kirker Brent Limited, is. Ah, hi. Uh, listen, uh, Tony, your mama tells me that you're a really good sailor. That's right, and he has the trophies to prove it. Oh, well, listen, why don't you take me out? Oh, please, I would absolutely love that. Sorry, but I'm expecting some overseas calls. I've got to... Well, tell me, that's all right. You can show Lucy the gardens, and I'll have Cynthia bring you the phone when the call comes. Excuse me. Well, I mean, it's not too buggy out, is it? No. Just give me five minutes. You're on. There's a nice breeze blowing out there, Kate. We better get going. Well, Charlie, y'all had your breakfast. <laughs> That's all right. Marianne, well, I'm so glad we have nice weather for you. Thank you. You'll be all right, won't you? Well, I'll be fine, Mrs. Black. Please don't worry about me. All right. Would you like some more food? Tony, your mama is a wonderful hostess. Charlie, have a piece of toast and relax. Oh. It's so beautiful here. But the only thing we haven't got in Texas is Maine. I hear your father's working on it. <laughs> so is your mother. I've been hoping that that's why you're trying to hide how nice you really are. I am right, Arna. You are nice. Good. <laughs> now that I'm all at sea, suppose you tell me what? You're not what you seem. <laughs> Who is? That good old Texas schoolboy act, that's just a sham. Well, everybody needs a little camouflage. Colorado School of Mines and Oxford on a Rhodes Scholarship, that's a very impressive pedigree. Don't you resent it? What they're trying to do to us. Merge us together like we were. Part of the inventory. Well, I don't care how it happens. If I get the man I want, I'm very impulsive, Tony. When Daddy decided to come up here, I knew what he had in mind. Oh, I knew that he liked your mother. But I also knew that she had a son. There wasn't much to lose, was there? I'd come and take a look and see if there was any future in it. I guess that's impulsive. I took a look. Two or three seconds, that's all you gave me when you were standing up there on the deck and looking out to sea. And I decided there could be a future. That's very impulsive. You think about it. I didn't know anyone was in here. Are you looking for something? No, no. Just wandering around enjoying the paintings. We always seem to be bumping into one another. That's all right. I usually lock the door when people are around. This room is my inner sanctum. You are lucky living amongst these paintings. It's like a gallery. Well, these aren't exactly... I don't recognize the artist. Who is it? You. You painted these. I'm sorry if they don't appeal to you, but I did say that this was my room. I didn't say I didn't like them. I think they're wonderful. If you can paint like this, why would you want to do anything else? They're not good. They're exceptional. There are those who would disagree with you. I don't care what anyone else says. I know. Do you? I wanted to be a painter myself. 
I studied for a year with Oscar Kokoschka. I stopped because I knew I'd never be as good as I wanted to be. But I did learn something. I learned how to look at a painting. And I know what I see when I look at yours. Oh, how beautiful. Where did you study? Paris. Don't you paint anymore? No. Look, it's a long story. It's a pity because you have such talent. Oh, there you are. Mary Anna, I've been looking everywhere for you. <laughs> Your father mentioned to me that you like orchids. We have the most amazing greenhouse. Tony, some of the guests have been asking for you. These orchids are actually meant to be really homegrown. Big girl. Isn't it nice? <laughs> oh, Lucy! I'm so glad you're here. I didn't want you to miss our little party. Well, I was just lying down oh. for a little while. <laughs> oh, where's Tony? I don't know. It's very difficult about parties. He tends to wander off. Hey, Tony! Where have you been hiding yourself? I had a few things I had to finish up. Well, I've got a proposition for you and your mother. Why don't you tell him, Kate? Oh, yes, darling. Charlie's been kind enough to invite us to his ranch next weekend. Isn't that lovely? I've never seen a Texas ranch. Sure, hope you'll come, Tony. Well, I... Uh, please do. Why not? Hey, great! Now, I'm gonna buy everybody a drink. Come on, honey, give me a hand. Right over here, young man. What do you think that Mr. Wyatt is going to say when he finds out that you have a ranch in Texas twice the size of his? Oh, I've just never had the chance to visit it, have I, darling? Oh, look here. Isn't this nice? Thank you. To the Wyatts. And the Blackwell. Yee-ha! <laughs> <laughs> You swim well. Thank you. My father said a girl should be good at sports. <laughs> Had breakfast yet? No, I didn't know the cook would be up so early. We're like a good hotel here. 24-hour service. Oh, very luxurious. Thank you. Oh. Do you always live in Munich? Mostly. We live in a very old castle, just outside the city. Man, the ramparts! The enemy are coming! <laughs> I like the dungeons, Miss. Ghosts and goblins live there. Do you really have dungeons? <laughs> yes. I'm sorry to leave them, Janie Ball. Where'd you go? To Switzerland, to school. So did I. Oh? Oh, no, sir. Oh, I was at La Rose. We're a special breed, aren't we? A little spoilt, perhaps. That's all right. It doesn't show, at least on you. Oxford and the Sorbonne brought me back to Earth. Then a few years in London, and I was set free on the world. Huh. Where did they finish you off? Ah! <laughs> That's an unfortunate expression. But not far from the truth. Here, uh, New York, 
South Africa, a few years in the South Pacific during the war. I am older than you. And after that, Paris. Well, keep me for not minding my own business. But it's difficult to understand why someone with your talent should just throw it all away. Let's forget it, okay? Look, let me go for a swim and after we'll have breakfast together. such thing as paradise. But here I was in this beautiful country with some of the most magnificent sights that I'd ever seen. And yet it was controlled by a government at war with its own people. You can't ever give up hope. Not ever. I say that. I say that a lot. But I don't believe it. I'm sorry you're so sad. Marianne. When are you going back to Europe? Next week. You're not to be married. Congratulations. He must be a very nice guy. He's a good man, a doctor. Known him all my life. Well, it's been a lot of fun. I even enjoyed the charade. Well, you have to learn that in this house, nothing is ever quite what it appears to be. I'm sorry if I was rude. Oh, please. When a rich and handsome young man is displayed, for two equally rich young women who mm -hmm. enjoyed the game, even though your mother knew from the start which one was to be chosen. Mm -hmm. She couldn't have known from the start. Oh, yes, she did, because I told her in Washington I was to be married. Good morning. Oh, Hi. How are you, darling? Mm -hmm. Well, I uh, see you've had a head start on all of us. Yes, I've been for a swim. Oh. Well, I'd better go and change. You'll excuse me. We're leaving at 10, so if I don't see you again, goodbye and thank you for a lovely weekend. I wish you all good things. She's a charming girl, isn't she? Well, here, sit down, Angel, and I'll tell you how to get to Texas. <laughs> Most folks like to fly direct to the ranch. Mr. White's got a big landing strip there. You see, from here, we got another hour's drive before we get to the main gates. Then it's a half hour to the main house. <laughs> About 200 people come to this barbecue. They've been flying in all day. They got enough food out there to feed the whole state of Texas. <laughs> There's a bar back there, Miss Blackwell. You help yourself if you like. Take me back. Sir? I said, take me back. To where, sir? To the airport. Oh, if you forgot something, we can send for it. You don't have to bother.
Good morning. Good morning. You have forgotten it again. Good morning, Mrs. Blackwell. Mm -hmm. That's better. Much better. Thanks for reminding me. Mm. Don't mention it. There is another Mrs. Blackwell, you know. Please! Oh, oh. Don't remind me. You can't just disappear. She'll worry about you. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, they're all standing around waiting for the sacrificial lamb to show. Oh, Cole, how tell me. But this boy has decided that home on the range ain't for him. <laughs> Sorry, Mother. I fell in love with the wrong girl. I will be if you don't let her know. Kill Joy. Mr. Tony, welcome home, sir. Your mother's in the conservatory. Cynthia, I'd like you to meet my wife, Marianne. Your wife? Congratulations, Mrs. Blackwell. Thank you. How do you do? You ready? <laughs> no. Neither am I. Discharge those other people. Oh, do I, I think they're go? fascists. Do you really? Yes. I don't think they belong. Hello, you two. Hello. Oh, hello. Hello. Oh, and Mary Ann, look how beautiful. Please let me kiss the bride. Oh, Brad. Mm. Oh, oh God. I'm so happy. Oh, thank you, Mr. Rogers. No, Brad, please. All right. Look at them. Marriage really agrees with you. Yes. We stayed in a lovely place. Tony found a cottage in Vermont. Oh, Lake Dunward is lovely, isn't it? Will you stay for dinner? I'm sorry, Mother, but we... Uh... Oh, I'd love to. We can see your friends tomorrow. He's told me all about your collection. I'm longing to see it. Of course, I insist. You're one of us now. And one day, very soon, all of it will belong to you, Tony. I want you to see everything, and I want you to know everything. Well, I guess we could stay for dinner. Oh, good. Brad, will you join us? Delighted. Oh, good. Well, the grand tour starts in five seconds. What would you like to see first? Oh, the whole bike. But your friend Anton taught you all about drawing. Oh, that's a good choice. <laughs> right this way, Mrs. Blackwell. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Brad, Brad you heard him. Mm -hmm. He didn't stand no. with He's happy. He's happy, Brad. I've yeah. done well for my son. I only wish you could have got everything you planned on. Of course I did. Well. He has the wife he wanted. He's happier now than all the years in Paris, and nothing can happen to change it, Brad. Well, I give you a lot of credit, Kate. Putting Tony ahead of the deal you really wanted. Oh, but I got that as well. Kate, may I remind you that it was the Wyatt Company you, you were after? I mean, Hoffman was an also ran from the beginning. You just used him as a stocking horse for Wyatt. Come on, damn it, Kate, admit it. It was Lucy that you you made sure she got up to Maine first. They had dinner together. I mean, Mary, Mary Ann had to come in the back door. Tony double-crossed you, my dear. Brad, you disappoint me. Since when do I leave things to chance? I had a complete report done on Lucy Wyatt. It didn't matter to me that she'd married that Russian Duke. I could have accepted that as a girlish indiscretion. child had a hysterectomy only two years ago. Marianne could give Tony a son. Do you mean you pushed him toward Lucy knowing that he would do anything not to marry? Well, I counted on your help too, Brad. You and Tony have always been fellow rebels. There are times when you're very angry with me. You try to be vindictive, but you just haven't the heart for it, Brad. Oh, now let me tell you what I want to do with Hoffman Company. And then we must be late for dinner. I think electronics is the coming thing of the age. What we have here, madam, are some of the more minor Renaissance painters, such as Da Vinci, Titian, and Gaspacho. <laughs> Used to keep them in my bathroom, but the steam from the shower made the paint run. Don't be sacrilegious. Oh, you think this junk is something? You ought to see what we got in the basement. But uh -huh. whenever a prince or a duke or something used to go bankrupt, mother would shoot over to you over the pickup truck to the palace. <laughs> Tony! 
What's the matter? You all right? I'm sorry. I shouldn't have called out like that. I'm all right, really. What happened? You, you were frightened. It must be the excitement. I couldn't see for a second. Are you sure you're okay? I'm fine. I don't know why I called out like that. It was stupid. You better go downstairs. Your mother be wondering what's happened to us. Mother. And it had never happened before. No. Yeah. Have you ever been in hospital, Marianne? Yes, twice when I was at school. Oh, what for? Well, the first time was pneumonia. Oh, you picked a good one there. We can cure that. <laughs> and how about the second time? It was a hockey match. Mm -hmm. I was running, and suddenly I woke up in hospital. Yeah, very dramatic. Yeah. You ever find out why? The doctor said it was an adolescent glandular upset. Oh. That's very dramatic. You, you, you remember that, do you? Oh, yes. I was... Lie down, would you, please? I was very cross. I was a young woman of 16, and he called me an adolescent. Yeah. <laughs> Hardly what you'd call diplomatic, yeah. you know? <laughs> But uh, can you try to remember, too, uh, how you felt when you woke up? I didn't want them to tell my father, because he'd worry. No, naturally. But, uh, I mean, physically. Oh. You feel any weakness on one side or the other? <laughs> You ask all the right questions. My right arm was a little weak. But it only lasted a few days and it never came back. Mm hmm. Never came back. Hmm. Well, your pressure's fine. That's the first piece of good news. Am I all right then? Oh, I'm sure you are. But uh, when Kate Blackwell asks me questions, I just better be ready with some answers. So, I'm going to have you go see an associate of mine. There are just a few tests I'd like him to run. Well, we've solved the mystery. Medically, it's called a berry aneurysm, something quite common in women. A small artery up here in the brain broke and shed a small amount of blood, and it was that pressure which caused the blurred vision and the headaches. Fortunately, these things are usually self-healing. Is it likely to happen again? No, very unlikely. Unless you're planning to take up hockey again, you can lead a perfectly normal life. Well, Tony and I like to swim and play tennis. Well, unless you overdo whatever exercise you do, uh, no problem. Oh, Dr. Harley, I haven't slept a wink since I did those tests. I can't thank you enough. Now, there's just know. one thing. If you're uh, planning to have children, perhaps it would be wiser to adopt. I thought you said I was all right. And you are. But uh, in pregnancy, the blood volume increases enormously. And especially in the last six or eight weeks, well, the pressure really goes up. Uh, with your history, the risk would be unacceptably high. Not only dangerous, but possibly fatal. So, you let me know, and we'll make some inquiries about an adoption. Hmm? Very curious, man. John Harley seems to be such an alarmist. At least he was in my case. He had me dead in my surgery three years ago. Uh -huh. You're feeling all right now, aren't you? Yes. Are you having any more of those dizzy spells? No. So great. Marianne, I am so glad that you and Tony are together. You are what I wanted for Tony all the way along. I love you, you know, and I'm really glad that you're part of our family. Okay, thank you. I am so happy. What is it, Dell? You don't seem very happy. Is something bothering you that you're not telling me? Marianne, I am already pregnant. But you want it. But I can't have the baby. Dr. Harley said I might die. And I wanted to tell him it was too late that I was already pregnant, but I couldn't. I'm the only one I can talk to. I don't know what to do. Oh, no, you mustn't. Absolutely not. It would be too great a risk, wouldn't it? Well, it might be. Every woman that gets pregnant takes a risk. This is different. Yes, it is. I suppose we might we have to decide which risks are worth taking. We do so want to, baby. You're right. Some risks are worth taking. Please don't. 
don't tell Tony what Dr. Harley said. Of course I would if you don't want me to. If either way, it'll be our secret. Oh, Mary Ann. Oh. It's going to be a wonderful thing. <laughs> For you, Mrs. Blackwell. You're going to have twins. Oh, Mr. Blackwell, you forgot your little dog. Oh, thank you very much. I think your friend is having a baby. Tony! Did your mother arrange that for you, too? Tony, stop. Is it for your baby? Yes. Congratulations. Well, they're not here yet, but any day now. It's going to be twins. How lovely for you. Good luck, Tony. Let's go there. I guess your mother bought them for you. Right, Blackwell? What's your no. problem? Not mine, Sonny. Yours. But I guess it's not so bad having a mother gives you anything you want. What's up, Penny? You want a beautiful model to sleep with? She buys you one. You want an exhibition in Paris? The old lady buys you one, too. That's not true. Isn't it? Doesn't he know? No, what? It's not important. Danny, we have to go. Your mother paid the gallery. Ask her. Go on. He's lying, isn't he? No. But it doesn't matter. Moray liked your work. He would have given you a showing anyway. He told me. Tell him about the art critic. Maybe it's time you stop living in a dream world. My mother asked do so to come. That's all it was. She has friends. Yeah, friends at the bank. She paid him to come. But he hated my work. He never would have done that, even if she paid him. Put the man out of his misery once and for all. Tell him. No, he didn't. Lisa told your mother that you could have become a great artist. She paid him? To destroy me? No, not to destroy. She thought she was doing it to give you a better life. I've got a message for you. Mr. Blackwell, I've got a message for you. Your wife's in the hospital. They took her there a few hours ago. I'm losing pressure. Get the other 
Blackwell. You have two beautiful daughters. My wife? She's all right, isn't she? I'm sorry. We did everything we could. But she died on the operating table. <laughs> died? If there's <laughs> comfort for who, who, who died? What do you say? See, she wasn't conscious during the birth of the first child, so I... You're lying! No. She's not dead! She came here for the baby! She's not dead! What is she doing? Where are you? Then you sure got me. Yes, sure, sure, sure. It's all right, Tony. It's all right, son. It's all right. Oh, Tony. Tony. It breaks my heart. What could have happened? She's so beautiful. Yes. She really so wanted those children. I tried to talk her out of it, but she wouldn't listen to me. Why would you want to talk her out of it? She knew that if she went ahead with that pregnancy, that it could kill her. What? You mean Marianne didn't tell you? But, but your mother knew. And she said nothing about it? Don't worry, don't worry. Marianne had a congenital weakness that we had warned her about. And she died of a cerebral hemorrhage. Oh, what did my mother have to do with this? Oh, I, I guess she thought I was just an alarmist, and she advised Marianne to go ahead with it. Now, Tony, Tony, I've seen, I've seen the twins. They really are the most beautiful little girls. All right, sir. Uh, would you make me a cup of coffee, please? Yes, sir. Uh, no sugar. Yes, sir. Thank you. 